September 2nd. My beloved sister, I write to you, encompassed by peril, and ignorant whether I'm ever doomed to see again dear England and the dear friends that inhabit it. I am surrounded by mountains of ice, which admit of no escape, and threatens every moment to crush my vessel. Why have you come so far upon the ice? To seek one who has fled from me. I, Victor Frankenstein, grew up a slightly less than average child in Geneva. I was promised to a girl named Elizabeth, whom my father adopted after her mother. His sister died. By age 17, it was decided that I should travel to Ingolstadt to study natural philosophy, chemistry, and its evil twin, alchemy. The time at length arrives when grief is rather an indulgence than a necessity. My mother is now dead, but we have still duties which we ought to perform. We must continue our course with the rest and learn to think ourselves fortunate whilst one remains whom the spoiler has not seized. Like one who, on a lonely road, doth walk in fear and dread, and, having once turned round, walks on, and <clears throat> turns no more his head, because he knows a frightful fiend doth close behind him tread. Victor? Oh, dearest Henry! My dearest Victor, what for God's sake is the matter? Do not laugh in that manner! How ill you? Save me! My dear friend, what has happened? My friend, I can offer you no constellation. Your loss is irreparable. What do you intend to do? To go instantly. To Geneva. This thy funeral, this thy dirt! Oh God! This court is now in session. The defendant, please rise. Just see, for its servant, the Frankenstein family, you are charged with the murder of young William Frankenstein. How do you plead? Nothing is more painful to the human mind than after the feelings have been worked up by a quick succession of events. 
the dead calmness of inaction and certainty which follows and deprives the soul both of hope and of fear. I, not in deed, but in effect, was the true murderer. Devil! You dare approach me? I expected this reception. All men hate the wretched. You, my creator, detest and spurn me, your creation to whom thou art bound. You purpose to kill me? How dare you sport thus with life? Remember, thou hast made me more powerful than thyself. Be gone! I will not hear you! You and your fellow creatures abhor me. Believe me, my creator, I was benevolent. My soul glowed with love and humanity. But am I not alone? Miserably. Someday I'm gonna get where I'm going Someday Someday Somewhere past the blindness of my faith I keep my eyes on the plans I've made and someday I'll get there someday past the smiles that crack like frozen lakes under children's figure skates well, I am going Past all of my own mistakes A thousand more I've yet to make But I am going I'm going in my way and I don't care what anybody has to say I know my I know myself and I am not afraid and someday I'll get there shall be more attached to one another. If you consent, neither you nor any other human being shall ever see us again. I consent to your demand on the solemn oath that you will quit Europe in every place in the neighborhood of man. As soon as I shall deliver into your hands a female, she shall accompany you in your exile.
During my youthful days, discontent never visited my mind, and if I was overcome by apathy, the sight of what is beautiful in nature, or the study of what is excellent and sublime in the productions of man, could always interest my heart and communicate elasticity to my spirits. But I am a blasted tree. The bolt has entered my soul, and I felt then that I should survive to exhibit what I shall soon cease to be, a miserable spectacle of wretched humanity, pitiable to others and abhorrent to myself. Three years before, I was engaged in the same manner and had created a fiend whose unparalleled barbarity had desolated my heart and filled it forever with the bitterest remorse. your promise. I have endured toil and misery, incalculable fatigue, cold and hunger. You dare destroy my hopes? Be gone, for the hour of weakness is past. I do break my promise. Never again will I create another like yourself, equal in deformity and wickedness. Are you to be happy? Will I grovel in the intensity of my wretchedness? Beware, for I am fearless. You shall repent the injuries you inflict. I go, but I will be with you on your wedding night. Where am I? You'll know that soon enough. Why so rough? I don't know what the custom of the English may be, but it is the custom of the Irish to hate villains. You must follow me now to give an account of the death of a gentleman who was found murdered here last This court is now in session. Will the defendant please rise? Victor Frankenstein, you are charged with the murder of this man. How do you plead? Have my murderous machinations deprived you also, my dearest Henry? But he certainly has a bad conscience. A family member has graciously bailed you out. Victor! Father? We are to return to Geneva and you to marry Elizabeth. I will be with you on your wedding night. I do. And do you, Victor Frankenstein, take her to be your lovely wedded wife, to love and to cherish till death do you come. I do. What is it that agitates you, my dear Victor? What is it that you fear? The night is dreadful. <laughs> Very dreadful. Thank you.